Hey guys, welcome to the Mad Monster Lab. Mad Monster Minions. Yeah, that's what we're going to call you from now on. Today's episode, because you guys requested it, is his makeup. My face. The, the makeup on his face, not his face. Highlight, the, shadow, drama, blending. All of that. We're going to do it. Alright, now to do this effect, Rouse is going to have to show you guys- WAIT! I want to switch things up a little bit. Why would you- What are you- <coughs> What are you- <laughs> God, can you turn the lights on, please? So, what do you think? You look like ice cream. Ice cream good, ice cream sweet. Ice cream good enough to eat. All right, now this makeup technique that I'm doing on my face isn't just about me and my face. It's about basic makeup techniques. It's the foundation, it's the shading, the contour, basic brush and sponge techniques, and use makeup. I'm gonna be using a water-based makeup, but these same techniques apply to cream-based makeups and other stuff. I'm gonna tell you more about it as we get into it, but you know, think with broader strokes and an open mind as what you can do with the techniques I'm showing you. It's not just how to do this specific look. Mad Monster Minions. We're back and I'm here again. And actually, I have no face on. Well, not my makeup. Because some of you asked about doing my makeup. And I'm here in my bathroom with my topless assistant, Erin. Say hi, Erin. Hi. Yes. So she's my bathroom attendant. Every good Mad Monster person needs one. So get one at your local, I don't know. I just pick them up off the street. Anyway, I'm going to show you what I use to do my makeup. First up is this black eyeliner pencil. It's a fat one called a Makeup Crayon. Um, you can use a thin one, it doesn't really matter. Also, I have Aqua Color. Aqua Color here is a water-based makeup, has glycerin in it. You can put it on without water if you need to, but I do because I like it a little thinner. It works better with the water, hence Aqua Color. This is a sponge, it's a little more porous than your usual makeup sponge, holds more water, makes application a little bit easier. Then here, I also have a palette of water-based colors. These water-based colors come in different brands. There are Aquacolor brands, there's Ben Eye brands. This is Wolf Brothers. There's all kinds, it doesn't really matter. I'm just using it for the black, really, on this. Then I am gonna use a makeup sponge. I only have one makeup sponge left. It's my last lowly makeup sponge. I'm using that. Then I've got three brushes here. These three brushes are basically, we have a large one, a medium one, and then a small round one. Sometimes I only use two. Depends on how lazy I'm feeling that day. I also have a pencil sharpener for sharpening. That's got a large input and a small input. Yeah. <laughs> then we've got this for our water and a hair tie to hold my hair back. Also, my topless assistant is going to hand me paper towels because I do use those for different things. Thank oh, nude assistant, sorry. Yeah. The first thing that I'm going to do is tie the old hair back there. So I'm going to tie my hair back just so I keep it out of my face. Now, these techniques that I'm showing you are really good for all types of makeup. You know, whether you're using a cream makeup, a rubber mask grease paint, water-based makeup, but it's a vampire, a ghoul, you know, goth, Marilyn Manson, wannabe, whatever you are. This will work. All these techniques are applicable to all kinds of different situations. So we're going to start out with the pencil. Please, topless person, hand me my pencil. Thank you so much. She's so hot. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to mark my waterline first. This is the line inside my eye. Now, I do this for a more sinister look. In stage makeup, a lot of times what people do is they'll actually even put white here to make their eyes look larger. And I do this first so I don't have to touch the makeup after I put my foundation on. And one time there. It doesn't have to be neat because I'm going to go back over with black. And that's what I do with the pencil there. The next thing, Aaron, my topless assistant, please hand me my foundation. Thank you so much. Damn, you're hot. Is it cold in here? Or is that just you? Uh -huh. All right. So this is aqua color. 
It goes on um, pretty thin. Can I have the sponge, please? Thank you so much. I wet my sponge with some water. I'm just going to take a little bit of makeup, get it onto the sponge, and apply it to my face. Now, the funny thing is with water-based makeups, they even out as they dry. So it can look a little blotchy at first. I also don't want it completely opaque. I want a little of my skin to show through. Not too much, but a little bit. I'm going to go right up under my eye. Down my neck a little bit to blend it in. I'll even hit the ears because it's going to take the red out. Now I'm not using a white because I think that's too extreme. So this is kind of an ivory color. Um, it's a little off-white. It still reads pale enough as it would be a white on stage. And I go right into my hairline. You see me pushing it back into the hairline? Get my eyelids. Cool. Now that dries. It'll dry and even out. I used to spend forever trying to get it smooth. Now with a cream-based makeup, you do have to use a regular makeup sponge and put it on a little uh, more carefully in order to get smooth coverage. Now I use a water base for a couple reasons. Number one, I don't have to powder it when I'm done. Number two, it washes off with soap and water, which is really easy. Cream-based makeups, you have to use a cold cream or another remover. You also have to set them with powder. So that works well. Now I'm going to go in with my blacks and I'm going to do my cheeks, my brows, my temples. So I have my topless assistant, Aaron. Thank you, dude. Oh, I'm not so cold in here anymore. Or is it? Oh, it's just you. Okay. All right. Anyway, we're going to do that. I'm going to be using the black. And can I have the large brush, please? I'm going to use a large brush. And I'm going to start doing what's called contour. And so if you're doing kind of a ghoulish makeup, this is good for doing a ghoulish makeup here. Just take a little black and a little bit of water. You don't need a whole bunch. With the contour, I'm going to start with the cheeks. Now, you have to know a little bit about anatomy. And that's where your cheekbone is. The easiest way to find out is to open and close your jaw. Where that meets is where it starts. And I'm going to bring that contour line to the corner of my eye. So I'm just going to start in here and bring it to the corner of my eye. And I went a little bit forward just for artistic purposes. The next thing I'm going to do is sink my temple. I can actually see my temple here. And I'm going to go in there and just whip that up there, pull that back. The third thing I'm going to do is my jaw. Now, I do this for a couple reasons. Number one, I put on 15 pounds when I went to India. Number two, cameras are two-dimensional when they take, when they shoot, unless you're shooting in 3D. So if you have the same amount of lighting, it makes it look flat. So you want to shade the neck down. So for all you actors out there, if you're doing headshots or whatever, always shade your neck down a little bit with some contour or blush or something just to make your face pop out. Also, it works great on the stage when you're getting blasted with light. So I'm going to do the other side. Same thing. I'll use a little more black there. And the temple. I need a little more on the cheek here. Just like that. Cool. Pretty easy. Now I want to blend this stuff. There are a couple ways to do it. You can just add a little more water up here and thin out the makeup. On the palette, sometimes I use my hand. That's like my favorite palette. And you just go through and you pull down. Now notice I don't go above this line that I have. I leave that pretty harsh. And that gives me a gradation, almost like it was airbrushed. I've tried airbrushing myself. It's a pain in the ass. It doesn't really work well. Same thing with the cheek. You go through and pull them down. Notice I don't go above that line. I just pull straight down from here. And then I'll blend it out just a little more. And see how I get it really soft towards the edge there. And I can even go back now and darken that right there. And then blend a little more. Same thing with the temple. I'll just pull this back. And I'll go right into the hairline. Now, if I wanted to, I could bring that up a little higher or a little lower, depending on the character and what I was trying to do. 
But really, I sink the temple, got the cheekbone, got the jawline, got the neck. Pretty much all set there. Now I'm going to switch to a thinner brush. My topless assistant is going to take that brush and give me the medium sized brush. The medium sized brush I use for the eyebrows, lighting the eyes, doing any character type work. So once again, I just wet the tip of the brush there. And get it on here, and rub it that. And I'm actually going to put this palette down so I can use two hands and go in here. I can balance my other hand. I'm going to go in for my brow. Now they talk about the brows framing the face. And they really do. You can create different character looks, like especially in stage makeup, just by the shape of the brow. And I go ahead and just do that as that brow. I'll do the other brow on here. In this eye, I'm going to be messing up quite a bit, and I know that ahead of time. Now I'm going to line my eyes. Without dipping this back in, I'm going to go straight into this because it's more of a pasty, thicker consistency, and I'm going to get a darker line. So I'm going to go here. I'm just going to line underneath. Yeah. Same over here. I always have clean brushes. If my brushes were washed and cleaned before I use them on myself, I will also wash and clean them before every use on every actor. Everything's cleaned. I even cleaned off the makeup by washing it off with water. And you can spritz a little alcohol on all your uh, eye pencils and the top of your makeup to sanitize those so that you aren't spreading infection and conjunctivitis and red eye and styes and herpes and syphilis and gonorrhea and clit. Oh, that's my personal life. Anyway, aside from that, you want to be able to just keep things neat and clean. So now I'm going to show you a different technique using a makeup sponge. I'm going to wet that by squishing it in the water and squeeze it. It's kind of sexy. Squeeze it and stuff so it gets damp and wet. It doesn't have to be soaking wet, just a little damp. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take this and I'm going to pull down on the side. Now, if it's too wet, you'll end up removing more makeup than you want. This is the quick and dirty technique if you don't want to use a brush. So when I'm in a hurry and I'm hungover and I'm doing this, this is how I do it. And then I just pull that down. You notice it's not as dark because it does blend in with the other makeup because it's a wet sponge. So you can do this as an alternative. I'm actually, so I match, I'm going to use the brush. So my assistant, Erin, thank you, my dear, is going to go for one. Is going <laughs> to, I'm going to use a brush to go ahead and do this, make it a little darker and pull it down. Once again, I don't go above that line. And I'm using a lighter touch, actually, as I go through. When I want it to get lighter, I press a little lighter. And then up here at the temple, I'm going to wet that a little bit, rub it on my hand there, just because I'm, I'm good my hand. And I'm going to go ahead and take that and pull this back into my hairline. I'll even go on to the ear with that so that darkens it up. I see I want to darken that up. So I'm going to take a little more black. Put that in there. And that in there. And then I use that sponge again. Blend those two together. And let that dry. Now I hadn't finished the eye. I'm going to go ahead and kind of clean off this brush here. Wipe it around my hand because I want to feather up this color on this side. So you can see I'm doing the same blending technique, pulling from the dark into the light. And you see how it kind of blends from one to the other. I'll do the same front of the eye. So it's just like an eyeshadow, and then I'm going to soften this line here for the liner, just by going over the edge of it. Now I'm going to add a scowl line, so I'm going to use some of my own anatomy here. Just going to pull into that. I'm going to pull down the side of my nose just a little bit. Usually, whatever up side I'm going to do, I do on the right side. 
I do that on purpose because people look from right to left. And so the more disturbing side is always on the right, juxtaposed by the less f***ed up side. So there's a difference between the two. And I like to do different stuff. Sometimes I just keep it normal. I make both sides match, you know, if I'm doing like the regular goth or vampire type makeup. You can see how this could work. You can tone it all down. You could put a uh, shadow in the middle of the forehead. You could put different lines around the mouth or whatever. But basic Halloween makeup, jumping out, ghoul, goth makeup, this is what's going to work. Now this eye, I'm almost going to black out completely. And I like to do these kind of crack type things. Sometimes I do drips. Sometimes I do webs. Now there is a reason why I'm doing all this. Um, and that reason is that I do want to emphasize certain points of the face, the eyes, the mouth, sink in the cheeks, sink in the temples, sink back the neck to really bring forward what I want. So there's a science to that. I said science. <laughs> there's a science to it. You guys will get more of that later. And my topless assistant is going to hand me my fine brush. Thank you, Aaron. Is it cold in here again? No. Oh, all right. Ah! Crawl over there and get that. It's good to have minions. Thank you so much, my dear. All right. Now I'm going to go in with this fine brush. I can just use that medium brush sideways and get the same look. But here, we're going to get in close. And I'm going to do some fine lines. And I'm not going to do too much because I'm going to add more, actually, as we shoot. In between sessions and stuff, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to do a little more stuff, a little more stuff, a little more stuff. And by the end of the day, I'm going to be all f***ed up. Now, the lips. The lips, if I use water-based makeup, it's actually going to come off. So I do want to use something that's a cream-based or an oil-based makeup. I'm lazy, so I cheat and use a pencil. All right. Lips, I really don't care about. I just kind of sketch them in. can't talk while I do this. No, actually, I, I do want to talk about one thing. If you're using cream makeups, oil-based makeups, you have to powder them to set them, and that means that the makeup won't move, and it keeps it from smearing. Kiss, when they do their makeup, they apply their white foundation, they put the black on, they powder it, then they go back and redo the black, so it looks like a darker black. But the powder actually keeps the makeup on for most of their show. They still sweat it off towards the end of the time, but they're up there. They're big old fat, sweaty men, so... All right, so now I've pretty much got all the basics on there. As you can see, this could be a black metal makeup, it could be a goth metal makeup, it could be a ghoul makeup, but the idea of doing the lines and blending is always the same, and it just depends on the character you want to do. You could even do an old age with these types of techniques. I'm only using two colors. Haunted houses, this works great. In fact, if you're in a haunted house and you're an actor or you're going to have an actor and they're going to be late, skip the foundation, just go in with the black and do the shadow and all that kind of stuff, and you'll end up with a good scary makeup really quickly. Last thing that I'm going to do now is just an overall blend to soften things up a little bit. I'm taking the makeup sponge. I didn't add any more water. I just kind of blend things a little bit for a more blended look. Just to soften some of those edges. I don't go over the detail stuff. And then you can seal it with a makeup sealer. Spray it on there. It's like a plastic candy coating. It'll stick it on there real well. I don't bother. I've been sweating through this stuff. You sweat through as long as you don't touch it. It stays on. It's easy to wash off. So I'm going to show you guys. We're going to step back. This is my bathroom. You can tell I had a hell of a time last night. And here's Erin. She's not actually topless or nude, but she's a sweetheart. She's been helping me out. She's going to help us out with the rest of the stuff today. Cool. Thank you for your help. All right, now it's time to smoke crack or meth or whatever you kids do these days. All right, let's go. Hey, Mad Monster Lab Minions, Rallis Khan here, and I just want to tell you guys that Friends Beauty Supply is where we get most of our materials for the Mad Monster Lab, and you can too. In fact, you can visit them in North Hollywood at their store, or you can go to this link here, help them out, Show them that you love the Mad Monster Lab because they love us and we just want to give it back to them.
And that's it for a very easy episode of the Mad Monster Lab. Hope you liked it, and if you did, check out these other videos that we have down here. Yeah, and if you have any comments, leave them down below. Like, what do you guys think of his mint chocolate chip colored jacket? Somebody obviously doesn't have a medical sexual fetish. It's, it's mint green. A medical fetish, all right? Tweet us, at Mad Monster Lab or at Rylascom, and uh, that's it. Douche.